The idea behind clapping for someone as they come up the stage is not because you know they are going to speak a lot of sense, but because you're giving them the courage to walk the longest distance of their life from the seat to the stage. Thank you so much. I was born and raised in Zambia. I come from a family of five. I'm the first born with four young sisters. But when you're talking about a family in my culture, it doesn't mean the nuclear family alone. It means the extended family as well. So think of my uncles, aunties, nephews, cousins, and my lovely grandmother when I'm talking about my family. And when I take a closer look at our family, I've come to realize that I'm probably one of the few, if not the only one, that has come as far as university level of education. But what does that actually mean? It means that now there's this huge pressure on me to start taking care of my family and those that are needy within us. It means as a man, I have to provide for them. And this is the pressure. Zambia is uh, more of a patriarchal kind of society than most other African states. And so to be a man means you are commanding authority and you, know, you make the decisions and all. And uh, at my age, I'm proud to say that I'm getting there. But you see, the way I've been raised and what I've gone through and what I've seen and the people that I've met, I've come to believe that it is easier to be a man than to be a woman. Okay, I'm talking about a society where women walk in fear because they think they're going to be the next victims of sexual violence. A girl child is being raped because a man thinks that if he sleeps with her, he's going to be cured of HIV. A woman is being bartered and she cannot even make a contribution to how the money is spent. She has no decision whatsoever whether to have unprotected sex or protected sex. That woman has no say whatsoever. And I, when I think of violence against women, I'm struck by somebody I love so much. I won't say their name or the relationship I share. But she was once married to a man that we can all term violent. The guy used to beat her day in and day out. She still has those scars. At one particular time, he removed the teeth in her mouth, two of them, with his blows and his punches. And one night she comes home and she's crying. The adults in the home are telling her, just leave this guy. And some are saying, you're a woman, you have to be strong, you have to prove to the community that you can hold your family together, so you stay. And she didn't want to stay because she said, it's too much. But she stayed anyway. I was only 14 then, and what I wanted to be was a lawyer. That one day, I'm going to put that man behind bars. Because I thought that men like him were supposed to be in prison. That was not enough until I grew a little bit older, and uh, I was told that, that um, both of them had HIV. And everyone in the family knew that this guy had so many girlfriends and was misbehaving even with the wife. She knew that. And everybody was talking behind her back that one day he's going to pass the virus to her. Well, it happened, and I was a peer educator then, and I thought, I knew that being HIV positive doesn't mean it's the end of your life. But to tell you the truth, it was so close to me that I was hit. And I looked at her, and I knew that you know, at one point I have to come to terms with that. Anyway, I don't feel like that anymore. I attended a gender workshop in Namibia, and we were talking about the role of men in ending gender-based violence. Men and gender. For me, gender was an issue left to be talked about by women. Even today, the world over, you know, the Ministry of Gender and Women Affairs, Department of Gender and Women's Studies, and gender, women, gender, women. And some men have left it for the women to fight for it. But I'll tell you the truth. Some men that I've interacted with back home would tell you, I can't allow my wife to watch any gender activities because the women who talk about gender, they want to teach my wife to rebel against me. I don't blame him because that's how he feels, attacked. And so he has to be defensive. But then I realized that that is where the problem is. 
And I started to ask myself questions. What does it really mean to be a man? Who is a real man? Is it the way that different societies have thought about a man? Like the UNAIDS one time brought together young people to talk about masculinities and HIV and violence. And so we're getting ideas from different parts of the world on what it means to be a man. It was amazing. A man has got to be strong. A man has got to be a fighter. You know, a man has to take risks. A man should be a little bit deviant from the norms. That's a real man. And back home, if you have multiple sexual partners and they don't even know about it, then you are a man. If you can convince somebody to have sex with you unprotected, you are a man. If you can have sex with the person you know is HIV positive and then you take a shower afterwards and then you don't have HIV and you think you are a man. But then I know that there's somebody who is a man and doesn't think that is being man enough. Maybe even in this audience, there's somebody that doesn't barter his wife or his girlfriend. Somebody that is not intimidated by the success of his partner. Maybe you are here, but I'll tell you facts. Out there, there's somebody right now that is about to rap a young girl because for him, he thinks manhood is being strong sexually and physically. And those are facts of life. Even in the movies we watch, the man comes out as strong. And that is why most African men are intimidated if, if the woman has a higher income than they have. True. I've seen people divorce on those grounds. No, she doesn't respect me anymore because she earns more than I do. So she's going to, you know, be divorced. But today, the boy is not about the people out there. It's about you as an individual. Why is it that some men I've met, even here in Sweden, love their families so much? It's amazing. They believe in cost sharing. It's amazing. You're not intimidated by the success of a woman. It's amazing. You want to protect yourself from HIV. You believe you're at risk. It's amazing. But somebody doesn't know that out there, and they need a role model. I haven't seen that in movies. I haven't seen that on TV. I haven't seen a man come up and say, I'm a man because I help with my family. I sweep the house. I clean. I do the dishes. That doesn't happen. There are so many men who do that, but then they're seated behind. They don't want to talk about it. Maybe on your right or on your left is a man. You look at them, you know that they've got potential to affect the world. Their ideas about true manhood are worth spreading around the world. Maybe it's time we redefine what it really means to be a man. Maybe that's why it all lies. That if you're going to respect me because I take care of myself, because I've got only one sexual partner, and then that means true manhood for you, then I would want to do that. But if you're going to give me credibility because I've got so many girlfriends and so many wives, then you are spoiling me. You're putting me at risk, and you're putting also my partners at risk. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see. Be the change you want to see in the world. But I don't think this change starts from a society in Africa, in Brazil, in Mexico, in India, or here in Sweden. It doesn't start from there. It starts from an individual, from you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, be that change. I thank you.